Before beginning to inject your patient, it is essential to clean the area that's to be injected in order to minimize the risk of infection. Normally, this is done with a wet wipe or a makeup wipe with the addition of some antiseptic spray. And you can use any type of antiseptic spray on here. Aim to wipe away from the injecting area, as so. The entire area that's to be injected should be cleaned, and the aim is to try and get off any grease, moisturizers, and makeup that may be on the face. It's a good idea to ask your patient to attend the appointment without any makeup on to aid this process. If you could just turn your head to the right for me, over here, thank you. There we go, the face is now ready. The next part of the process is to apply local anesthetic to the areas that are being injected. This is particularly important in patients who find the injections uncomfortable or in needle phobic patients. All the areas that are being injected should have local anesthetic applied. Here we have some Emla cream, which we are going to just apply topically as so. It's important to get good coverage on all the areas that are being injected. After about 20 minutes, the cream can be rubbed off. The next step of the process is to assess and mark the face. It's a good idea to do this even when you become more experienced in injecting anti-wrinkle treatment because it shows that you're taking your time and it leaves very little room for error. So we'll start off by assessing the glabellar area. If you'd like to frown, please. You can see these two lines here, and you can see that the procerus and the corrugators are very active. The first injection tends to be at around the midpoint of a line between the end of the eyebrow and the medial canthus of the eye and the, media, the end of the eyebrow and the other medial canthus of the eye. So if you imagine two lines crossing there, and the midpoint of that line would be the first injection mark, which should be in the bulk of procerus. If you frown again for us, about here. If you'd like to frown again, you can see that corrugators, the bulk of the corrugator is here and here. And normally, the second and third injections are just above the eyebrow into the bulk of corrugator. If you'd like to frown again, please. So I'll put a mark just there and another one just here. For the next injections, we need to mark out the mid pupillary line. So I'd, I would ask the patient to look directly ahead. Notice where the pupils are and in the mid pupillary line, just draw a dotted line just above on both sides. When injecting the glabellar area, this line is not to be crossed. So lateral to this line on both sides is an area that should not be injected and that's to avoid ptosis of the eyebrow and also an eyelid droop. So this is an area that should not be injected. The third and fourth injections are going to be just medial to this line. So if you frown again for us, frown for us, that's it. You can see that corrugator is still active just here. So we're going to do one more injection just there and another one just here. This is the glabellar area complete. We have one, two, three, four, five injections. In terms of the number of units to be injected into each of these points, it is at the clinician's discretion to decide that. However, the following guidelines should be taken into account. This injection here should be between 5 to 10 units. This one should be between 5 to 10 units, and so should this one. Each of these should be 2.5 units. 
The way that you will decide how many units is required depends on how strong the muscle is. If you'd like to frown for us, in this particular case, I would put seven units here, seven here, seven here, 2.5 and 2.5. For each area of the face, it's important to ask the patient to contract the muscles prior to marking so that you can assess where the wrinkles are forming and where the injections are required. If you'd like to raise your eyebrows for us, so on assessing the forehead and frontalis here, we can see that the wrinkles are distributed fairly evenly across going right up to the hairline. In females, we tend to inject in a V pattern. Bear in mind, as we mentioned earlier, that frontalis runs this way and this way, so there is a triangular area just here that's deficient of muscle and does not require any injection. If you could lift up one more time, please. On this particular patient, I would mark the forehead as so. Because she's got lines running right up to the hairline, I do another two much smaller injections just here and here. The frontalis injections are 2.5 units each. 2.5 units here, 2.5 units here, 2.5 units here, and 2.5 units here. These units higher up, these injections very close to the hairline, can be anything from one and a half to two units each. In this case, I'm going to use two and two. We're now going to mark the periorbital area. Again, we're going to ask the patient to contract. So would you kindly smile for me and keep holding that smile as long as you can? So the first is an injection is in line with the lateral canthus of the eye. And if you put your finger on there and have a feel for the orbit, it should be a one fingertip, about a centimeter away from the orbit. So the first injection will be just there. Carry on smiling for me, please. And if you imagine a triangle coming out like this from around the orbit, you can kind of get a feel for the crow's feet. You can see the borders of the crow feet, crow's feet. So the upper and lower injections will be at the top and bottom of this border. If you smile again, hard as you can, that's it. So we'll put one injection just there and one injection just here. So we've got three injections, one, two, and three. We're going to proceed on the other side of the face in exactly the same manner. So if, if you could kindly smile for me, thank you. The first injection will be in line with the lateral canthus of the eye, one fingertip breadth away from the orbital bone. First injection will go there. And as you can see, as the patient is smiling, you can see the inferior and superior borders of the crow's feet in a fan shape just here. One injection at the top, again a fingertip breadth away from the orbital bone, and one at the bottom the same. Three injections. If you'd like to turn your head to the left for me, when injecting the periorbital region, these three injections are standard, and the doses that are advised are five units here, two and a half units here, two and a half units here, identical doses on the other side. In this particular patient, she's requested a brow lift as well. So what we're aiming to do is just lift the tip of the eyebrow just very slightly. And we can do that by just placing one further injection just here at the tip, the lateral tip of the eyebrow of one to one and a half units on this side and do exactly the same thing on the other side. 